Ever heard of hardcore hardtail? Well, British bike companies have been all about this style of steel steed for years, and US bike companies are now using many of the same geometry principles. So last year, things got really interesting when we tested the Sirius S5. It's extremely low stack height and ultra slack head tube angle were built around a very short travel fork. And this combination of elements was simply something that we hadn't really seen before. Better yet, it added up to a far better and more versatile hardtail than we had expected and change kind of the way we think about this style of bike as a whole. So when they teased the launch of the S6, which was built with the same geometry, a titanium frame and loads of mounts, we had to give it a try. So how does the slackest bike I've ever pedaled ride? Stay tuned to find out. Alan Finley, the founder and lead designer of Pipe Dream, has crafted a diverse steel bike lineup since starting the brand in 2005. So from the Pipe Dream ALICE I tested last year to the full mont, full monty, no, full moxie, a full suspension rig with generous travel, um, to this thing, the S6. Named after the brightest star in the night sky, the Sirius holds the distinction of being the longest standing bike in Pipe Dream's lineup. Originally designed back in 1997 by Allen, it has undergone six iterations and has evolved in the process. So while the S6 maintains the same geometry as the S5, it's built from titanium and it comes with a bunch of new frame features that we'll explore in this review. All right, so what is the Sirius S6? Well. Simply put, it's a boost space short travel hardtail optimized for a 100 through 120 millimeter 29er fork and designed to fit 29 by 2.6 inches or 27.5 by 2.8 inch tires. But this bike is not that simple. So before we get any further, I just want to mention that this video is partially supported by 45 North. Late fall and early spring weather can be unpredictable, and nothing ruins a bike ride like cold feet. That's where 45 North Ragnaroks come in to ensure a warm and delightful experience. With a breathable and waterproof layer and a neoprene ankle cuff, the Ragnarok not only repels moisture, but it also is designed to tackle cold temperatures, boasting a comfortable rating of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're in search of clipless shoes that can handle those tricky shoulder seasons, don't don't miss out on the Ragnarok. Click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also find a link in the description below. Funny enough, actually, this bike was first sent to Logan for review. He actually tested the S5, the steel version, earlier last year, and it only made sense to compare the two. So it wasn't until after he built up the bike from scratch and took it out for a ride that he realized that he had the long version. So Logan is six feet or 183 centimeters tall and Pipe Dream recommends the longer sizing based on his geometry. I'm five, nine and a half or 176.5 centimeters and I fall right in the middle of the sizing recommendations for the long size. So to say I'm happy they sent Logan the wrong size is an understatement and you'll soon learn why. It's also worth mentioning that the Sirius S6 only comes in two sizes. So if the long version is too much bike for you, you might have to resign to that steel Sirius S5, which does come in a long-ish size, which equates to a small. So the long was a perfect fit. The lower stack and long reach is so inspiring to ride. I absolutely love that 460, 465 millimeter reach zone. And the lower stack gave me a better feel of the bike on the trail. The frame also has loads of standover, which takes away potential frame bag space. However, the short seat tube allows for a serious amount of dropper post travel. The long and longer version actually share the exact same seat tube length, something Pipe Dream has done consistently with the Sirius lineup. I spec'd my bike with a 170 millimeter Fox transfer dropper post, but it could likely fit something bigger. All right, so at first glance, it, the bike might just resemble an ordinary hardtail, but upon closer inspection, you'll kind of appreciate its beautiful frame with flawless welds and pleasing curves. It looks sharp, but the secret sauce is definitely hidden in the numbers. So we talk about progressive geometry all the time these days. 
Progressive in today's bike world is defined by slacker head tube angles, longer front centers, shorter stems, and so on. And the Sirius S6 has all of these things built in a package designed around 100 through 120 millimeter fork. Well, that might sound a little odd, especially with a bike that otherwise appears to be a very hardcore trail hardtail. The S6 comes with a claimed 65 degree sagged head tube angle based on using 100 millimeter travel fork, a 77.5 degree seat tube angle, and a 752 millimeter front center. And it works, and it works pretty well as it rides much bigger than the fork travel actually might indicate. Despite their claimed numbers, I actually did a quick measurement at home here, and I actually realized that this is the slackest bike I've pedaled. Coming in at 63 degrees unsagged and 63.9 degrees at 20% sag with this 120 millimeter fork. All right, so the long S6 comes in at 4.8 pounds or 2.18 kilograms and is made from a magical, yes, I said it, multi-butted 3AL 2.5V titanium tube set. Pipe Dream is actually no stranger to using uh, the titanium material, having made many bikes out of it over the course of two decades. However, Currently, the S6 is the only titanium frame in their lineup. The CNC'd machine yoke and frame ends, where the sliding dropouts attach to, are made from a stronger and stiffer 6AL4V titanium. And just like the S5, the S6 also comes with 16 millimeter sliding dropouts, giving the bike loads of adjustability and allowing for ample tire clearance. Finally, the top tube is somewhat ovalized near the front of the head tube uh, and comes without external reinforcements. This kind of gives the frame a very clean and polished look, a characteristic that also is shared with the steel S5 sibling. All right, so while analyzing the geometry numbers is one thing, it's definitely hard to talk about the Sirius S6 without digging straight into the ride quality, which I would argue is the most intriguing part of this bike. But these opinions are not shaped over a single ride or two. We like to put miles on the bike to understand the nuances of each particular frame better. So when Logan was testing the Sirius S5 last year, he mentioned it actually took some getting used to. And while I've been there with other review bikes, I felt the opposite right away with the S6. Right away, I felt at home and perhaps my body was primed for this geometry after riding the Reeb SST for the better part of the summer or or I was mentally prepared after reading Logan's review, along with the frequency of him saying how much he enjoyed the S5. Whatever it was, I had serious flashbacks of the SST. While the S6 certainly offers a bit more quickness, especially on you know flatter, non-eventful climbs or single track, the way it handled technical climbs reminded me of the SST. It allowed me to slow down almost to a crawl, even track stand, giving me time to kind of rebalance and power up a section of terrain that was a little bit more challenging. But the beauty here is that I never felt that long front center to be too long. And only on say the steepest of climbs would I need to really shift my weight to the front part of the saddle or even stand up. Now let's not forget this is still a hardtail. And on some technical uphill sections, I did find that rear wheel or that rear tire skidding out or jumping around, which normally could be handled a little bit better with that rear wheel tracking with a full suspension bike, but we're really not here to compare apples and oranges despite the similar climbing characteristics between the two. Descending though is where this bike truly excels. So as stated earlier, this bike instills a greater sense of confidence than one would expect from a bike optimized around a short travel fork. With a longer wheelbase and that buttery titanium frame, what would typically be chunky, harsh sections of trail was definitely toned down. So the relatively short fork travel and low stack creates a sweet spot. Uh, allowing me to consistently feel that front wheel track to the ground, which gave me a very locked in grounded ride. It was an odd feeling, but I almost found it to be zen-like on the trail. But at the same time, this bike can very much be playful when you want it to. And I noticed this on trails with some more kind of rollers and whoopties and lips. One thing that was quite annoying was just the chain slap. Uh, without any stay protector, but it did quiet down after I put a big old piece of shelter tape on there. You'll likely want to do the same or add some bar tape. 
All right, so the S6 comes with their proprietary dropouts that are adjustable, like I said, by 16 millimeters, giving the bike a 425 millimeter chainstay in the shortest position or a 441 in the long, giving you the ability to fine tune the rear end while also quickly setting this thing up single speed if you want. I tested the bike in two positions, 435 and 425, and despite only 10 millimeter difference, there were some really interesting differences. The shorter rear end noticeably helped me get around tight corners, which then in turn helped me move the front end quicker. But it definitely was not as comfortable as that longer position. I found it rattling me around a little bit more. So I definitely preferred that 435 millimeter length as it definitely gave me a more grounded, sure-footed feeling on fast descents, but also helped me kind of navigate those slower speed technical climbs definitely more efficiently without too much of a sacrifice in handling. So I tested the S6 fitted with two different pairs of 29 by 2.6 inch tires mounted to these 31.5 millimeter internal rims. So the first set I tried were the Victoria Mezcals, which actually measure wider than 2.6 inches. The second pair I tried were the Kenda Ragolith Pros, and they're pretty true to size at 2.57 inches. As a rear tire, the Ragolith Pros were definitely really tight between the stays and actually ended up rubbing the yoke when flexing. The Mezcals actually don't work all together in the forward position and don't even roll. It's not that big of a deal since you can push the dropout back a touch, but it is worth noting if you really do want that shortest position. And if I'm being picky here, I ended up losing the adjustable dropout screws on my first day, so definitely make sure they are tight after taking off on your first ride. Luckily, my hardware store had um, a 30 and 40 millimeter M5 bolt and nut to mimic the screw, which I used with success. Unlike the S5, which essentially has no bike packing forward features, the S6 is loaded with them, which makes this bike that much more attractive and why it won an award this year in our annual Gear of the Year publication, which can be found below. Not to mention how incredibly compliant the bike is when loaded up. So I took the S6 on a five day journey along the Coconino bike packing loop in Arizona from the lava rock filled single track out of Flagstaff to the sandstone ledges in Sedona. It handled chunky terrain with confidence. After a big descent or a challenging climb, I actually kept asking myself if I was really on a hardtail with noticeable flex making for a much more enjoyable experience over some pretty long days in the saddle. So paired with its very capable geometry, I rode the S6 harder than any other loaded hardtail I've been on. I guess the only thing that actually kind of held me back on that trip was the tail fin aero pack. It would kind of get in my way on really steep descents, which had me kind of thinking about wanting a slightly shorter arch to kind of lower that load, but I'll bug tail fin about that. The S6 also has a lower rear rack mount, so I could have used a different rack instead of relying on the tail fin system with the axle kit. All right, so the frame also comes with these things right here. Two rear mounts near the end of the top tube, kind of by the seat tube. So this is the first time I've actually seen such mounts in this position, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, it just offered secure water bottle storage in that position, but I would love to see a pair of mounts near the head tube for just direct mount top tube bags. Frame also comes with three pack mounts on the underneath side of the down tube, and despite only having two inside the main triangle on this pre-production frame. The final frame actually comes with five mounts on the inside of the down tube, a three pack and a two pack. It also comes with ISCG mounts for a bash guard and except for the dropper post routing, the bike is fully externally routed. However, the position of these cable guides underneath the, uh, the top tube here definitely has worn a little bit of a hole in my custom curiosity frame bag. So I wouldn't mind seeing guides that are perhaps less pointy or similar to the ones found on the underneath side of the down tube. So speaking of frame bag, it is worth mentioning that this beautiful custom bag built by Arley of Curiosity was the perfect tool for the job and it just looks stunning. So I ended up bringing the frame uh, in before I had built it up so that we could kind of visualize a few color matching options. Uh, in person, which I definitely think is the way to go. I'm a huge fan of this dual zipper and it's proven to be durable along with the bag as a whole. And the fit within the frame and the overall width was 
perfect. The Sirius S6 is sold as a frame only, which might be more work than some folks want to take on, but it lets you kind of customize the bike around your needs. It allowed me to use some parts that I had lying around and others that are in for review. However, if you need to get a head start on the build, Pipe Dream also offers add-ons, specifically their finishing kits, uh, which is their headset top cap and bolt, headset spacers, and seat post clamp. As with most progressive mountain bikes these days, the S6 is designed around a 44 millimeter offset fork, and designers, frame designers, believe shorter offsets work better with slacker head tubes. This is likely another factor as to why this bike holds a line so well, but in turn, I did notice a little bit of wheel flop, mostly at slow speeds, or definitely when I was trying to take a photo or video. As for forks, I started using this bike with a Fox Stepcast 34 before I got my hands on this thing, the Manitou Matic Pro, which I much preferred. So not only does the Matic's crown match the titanium frame, but the reverse lowers here look pretty cool. It's also super stiff, really easy to dial in, feels very predictable through all of its travel, and it's internally adjustable from 110 millimeters to 150 millimeters. All right, so another big part of this build is the Industry 9 Enduro 31.5 wheel set. A stunning wheel set, you got purple hubs and uh, the spoke designed by yours truly. 2.6 inch tires mount really nicely to the 31.5 millimeter rims, giving the tire an excellent balance profile. I really love the Kenda Regolith Pros. They certainly roll maybe a little bit slower than the Mezcals, but not bad in the big picture of tires out there. They also grip really well in dry conditions and even a little bit of snow. Um, all in all, very inviting, especially at their price point. So I also used the new Raceface Era cranks on this build and they were great. They kind of helped keep the weight down on the bike. Uh, they're very stiff and proven to be, I guess, surprisingly durable, although I haven't had any issues with Raceface carbon cranks others here have. I haven't experienced too many pedal strikes with the 64 millimeter bottom bracket drop, but I also adapt quickly to bikes in this regard. I do really love this silver wear protector, which definitely plays well with the theme of the build with the silver fork crown and these level brakes here. I have not had the best experience with the new brakes from SRAM, but the ULT levels definitely uh, performed, I'd say a little bit better than the others I've tested. Although the stopping power still does not live up to uh, that of say the TRP Trail Evos or Shimano XT brakes. I just still really love the shape though. Great, great shape for bike packing. So I also used a 50 millimeter race face stem, 800 millimeter salsa guide 35 millimeter bars with a 20 degree rise, which helped me kind of dial in that reach. Other components include a Cane Creek 40 headset, Blue Wheels manufacturing bottom bracket, a 30 tooth round wolf tooth uh, chain ring, and the first generation Axis Eagle drivetrain, which I've had for, I don't know, like since 2019. All right, so sometimes I struggle to define what a bike truly means to me. But what's not hard to explain is 2023 has been the year of testing some of the most fun bikes I've ever pedaled in my life. I'm also grappling with the fact that the Pipe Dream Cirrus S6 is at the top of that list. So being an X racer, I still prioritize a bike that can climb well. And I was pleasantly surprised that Pipe Dream figured out how to incorporate a quick and relatively agile geometry into a bike while making a bike that's still unbelievably confident handling basically everything I threw at it without needing a long travel fork. Paired with Pipe Dream's excellent selection of titanium tubing, a variety of gear mounts, and an overall pleasing aesthetic, it helps make this bike not just a top bike for 2023, but maybe the most capable bike I've pedaled to date. So because of my positive experience with the S6, I was chatting with Alan about sending the bike back, but instead I asked if I could buy it from him. He quickly sent over an invoice. Christmas came early. Pretty excited about it. So the Pipe Dream Sirius S6 comes in at 2,040 pounds or 2,600 USD. Certainly not the cheapest, but the titanium tube set and added mounts are significant upgrades to this bike. The question is, are these enhancements enough to justify the cost over the 699 pound steel version or around 900 USD?
let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell and consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. The collective has a lot of awesome perks, including the twice yearly bikepacking journal, monthly giveaways, and much more. So to learn more about the Bikepacking Collective, click on the card in the top right corner, where you can find a link below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further.